go inside. Michael spins. It's good. Oh, yeah! What a shot by Michael. Michael is talking to the crowd. Jock Flicks presents the top 10 times Michael Jordan humiliated his opponents. It's about to get brutal as Jordan turns opponents into involuntary dunk reels and trash-talking punchlines, so grab your popcorn and maybe a helmet for flying egos. This is Air Jordan at his most ferocious, ready to propel his opponents into basketball history. Let's go. The shot over Craig Alo. The book is Craig Elo. Mm -hmm. We all know the shot. They talked about the shot. Well, speaking of that shot. Michael Jordan's shot, 1989. Of course, the first round of the Eastern Conference playoffs, and he was on the losing end of it. And Craig, unfortunately for you, the anniversary isn't as good as it is for Brad, but coming up on May 7th, a moment with which you will always be associated. How did that affect the rest of Elo's life? Did Michael talk about it? We were starting to become a winning franchise. And three seconds remain, Chicago, with a timeout, now has only a 20. In the 1989 Eastern Conference playoffs against the Cleveland Cavaliers, the Bulls were down by one when Michael Jordan scored a buzzer beater over Craig Alo for the win. Jordan receives an inbound pass and dribbles hard to the top of the key, while Alo stays with him. Jordan puts up a jumper over Alo and his outstretched arm. The shot goes down. Jordan emerges with adrenaline and numerous fist pumps. The game is over. Alo felt humiliated by the play, especially since Jordan taunted him earlier in the game. After the game, Alo would go on to say, You got me, MJ. Pure magic. In March of 1995, Michael Jordan returned to the Chicago Bulls after a year and a half away from the game. Play basketball. I think he's been great for the game, and uh, he's the best player of all time. In just his fifth game back, he would face the New York Knicks. At halftime, the Bulls trail by a point. In the third quarter, Jordan explodes with fadeaway jumpers, impossible layups, and a three-pointer that hangs in the air before swishing through the net. The final seconds are tied, and the ball is in Jordan's hands. He's double-teamed by John Starks and New York big man Patrick Ewing. Jordan drives hard to the free-throw line and finds the open man by the rim, who slams it home for the win. Jordan did it all this game, finishing with 55 points. The game was a statement that the King had returned and New York knew his reign was far from over. In game one of the 1992 NBA Finals, known as the Shrug Game, Michael Jordan would face Clyde Drexler and the Portland Trailblazers. The big story leading into this series was that Drexler had grown as a player and might be on the same level as Jordan. Jordan didn't appreciate this comparison and let's just say he took it personally. He started off making seven of his first 12 shots, including three three-pointers. MJ hit his fourth and then his fifth three-pointer of the half. The home crowd was stunned and in awe of their king. After making his sixth three-pointer of the half, the crowd went crazy. MJ turned around and shrugged as if to say that even though he was sure what was going on, or maybe he was trying to say, what did you expect? He finished the game with 39 points as the Bulls won easily. MJ and the Bulls would go on to win this series and their second championship in a row. Oh my. Foul. In game five of the 1997 NBA Finals against the Utah Jazz, known as the flu game, Michael Jordan faced a shivering shadow of himself with nausea and fever. His teammates, including Scottie Pippen, admired his resilience and determination. Jordan's first half was a blur of sweet and chills, weaving through the Jazz defense and proving that even as sick as he is, he still won't be stopped. At half team, he collapsed on the bench, but his teammates rallied around him, pumping his veins with encouragement. In the second half, Jordan continued to put on a clinic, making shots, stealing the ball, and soaring for rebounds. With seconds left on the clock, Jordan sank the game-winning shot. Jordan delivered a legendary performance, scoring 38 points, seven rebounds, five assists, three steals, and a block, leading the Chicago Bulls to victory over the Utah Jazz. This display of grit and determination cemented Jordan's reputation as a champion who could overcome any obstacle. The Bulls would go on to win this series and their fifth championship. On the day Michael Jordan humiliated Corey Benjamin. Well, that's a pretty cool story. 
Michael Jordan destroyed poor Corey Benjamin. Even then, Jordan was tough to defend. I mean, the thing about Jordan was you knew what he was going to do. You knew what he was going to do. In 1999, Michael Jordan, a retired NBA player, was tasked with teaching a young rookie named Corey Benjamin a lesson in basketball dominance. Benjamin, confident in his abilities, challenged Jordan to a one-on-one -on -one match with the Chicago Bulls. Jordan, despite being a few years older and out of practice, dismantled Benjamin with ease, draining fadeaway jumpers and dunks. The final score was a merciless 11-0 defeat, leaving Benjamin speechless and humbled. This story serves as a reminder that respect is earned, not given, and as a cautionary tale about the dangers of overconfidence. Michael Jordan ruthlessly destroyed the Jordan stopper Gerald Wilkins. Cleveland in the offseason brought in Gerald Wilkins to be the Jordan stopper. Felt bad for your brother because you knew that was going to make Michael <laughs> mad when you, oh, you're the Jordan stopper, huh? In the 1989 Eastern Conference playoffs between the Chicago Bulls and Cleveland Cavaliers, Michael Jordan faced Gerald Wilkins, nicknamed the Jordan Stopper. Despite Wilkins' arrogance, Jordan dominated the series, averaging 40 points per game. Jordan, as he always did in clutch situations, hit a game-winning shot to give the Bulls the victory in Game 4. In Game 1, Jordan scored 43 points indicating his unwavering determination. In game four, the Bulls won with a missed three-pointer, sending them to the Eastern Conference Finals. Jordan's confidence and mental toughness in the game were evident, showcasing Jordan's ability to perform at his best in big moments. Michael Jordan, your defending champ from the 87 dunk contest in Seattle. Oh, and oh. there he goes. Michael Jordan faced Dominique Wilkins in the championship round of the 1988 slam dunk contest. Jordan's winning strategy concentrated on emphasizing the complexity of his slam dunks. The apex of his performance came in the form of a free throw line dunk. From there, he's going back, back. That brain may well be it. The people are excited. They like this. I can hear his engines revving now. Here, Jordan, ready to take field. off. <laughs> Which featured exceptional hang time and elegance in midair. This dunk, executed from beyond the free throw line, not only earned a perfect score, but also left an indelible image of Jordan's mastery of aerial exploits. The increased difficulty level humbled Wilkins, securing Jordan's victory in the competition. What's your best MJ story? Oh man, um, we in Chicago, you know, it's my rookie year. And I had played against Mike three times head up. So KG had never seen me play against Mike. Kevin Garnett, a young NBA rookie basketball player, faces the legendary Michael Jordan. On February 22, 1996, Kevin Garnett and the Minnesota Timberwolves were visiting Michael Jordan and the very talented Chicago Bulls. It was a close game as the teams went back and forth trading baskets. Late in the third quarter, with the Bulls hanging on to a two-point lead, Kevin Garnett praises and cheers on his teammate J.R. Ryder, who is having a great game with 24 points, going into the fourth quarter up against Michael. Garnett says to him, keep doing what you're doing. Keep going at him. He can't guard you. The only mistake Garnett made was that while saying this to his teammate, Jordan was standing next to them and heard it all. Once again, Jordan took this personally. Over the next six to seven minutes of basketball, Jordan scored 17 points and opened up his team's lead to 25. Garnett learned a humbling lesson that day. Don't poke the bear. Or in this case, don't poke the goat. Michael Jordan humiliates O.J. Mayo. You may be the, the best, best high school, school player, player, but I'm the best player in the world. I got it going a little, little bit. Three, two, one. Game five. O.J. Mayo, a young and cocky high school basketball player, was at Michael Jordan's basketball camp. He was talking trash to Jordan, who was a retired NBA player at the time. 
Jordan decided to teach Mayo a lesson by playing one-on-one -on -one with him. Jordan dominated Mayo, hitting fadeaway shots and backing him down in the post. After the game, Jordan told Mayo that he might be the best player in high school, but Jordan was the best player in the world. This story is a great example of Jordan's competitive spirit and his trash-talking abilities. The final shot, the last dance, Michael's legacy is etched in the air. In Game 6 of the 1998 NBA Finals, a game that featured an injured Scottie Pippen limping up and down the court. Watch Pippen come across the lane. And as he reaches up to dunk, he pulls his back out. A game that has witnessed a very tired Michael Jordan because of the extra workload that has been placed on his shoulders. With 18.9 seconds left and the Bulls down by one, Michael Jordan quickly swipes the ball from Karl Malone's hands, breaking free and racing down the court uh, with his agility. Everyone knows who's taking the last shot. Jordan was guarded by Byron Russell with a lightning fast crossover, sending Russell off balance. Jordan's body was a finely tuned instrument, coiled and uncoiled, releasing a 20 foot prayer and arcing the ball in a perfect parabola. The Bulls go up by one and would hold on to win their third championship in a row and sixth overall. Jordan was engulfed by his teammates. The echoes of that shot still reverberate through basketball lore, reminding us that even on the grandest stage, with the weight of the world on his shoulders, Michael Jordan could paint masterpieces with a basketball and his indomitable spirit. Please share your thoughts on this video in the comments section. If you enjoyed it, please like it and subscribe if you want to see more. I hope you enjoy it, and I will see you in the next one. Take care.